We've reached the tie break round, and each team now has two minutes to debate the question that they were given uh, previously. Um, so, uh, I don't know how to begin. We can begin with you if you'd like to begin. So let's begin with uh, Hertfordshire for two minutes. Hello again. Um, the question is, which factors should negate sexual consent? For me, I would say deceit in general should negate sexual consent because you're lying, full stop, it's an inherent lie. But to be specific, in the case of McNally, the, the courts decided and said that um, there were two types of deceit, insignificant deceit and significant deceit. Now, insignificant deceit would be things such as makeup and plastic surgery. And um, significant deceit, to, for me, would be something like gender, disease, and religion. The reason why insignificant deceit would not negate consent is because they do not change you as a person. They do not change the purpose of the act. Whilst significant deceit, such as gender, disease, and religion, do change the purpose of the act. In terms of gender, the purpose of the act was intended to be a man and a woman sleeping together. It results in a woman and a woman sleeping together. In terms of disease, the objective was to sleep with someone with no result. You sleep with someone with HIV now, you now end up with a disease that you did not expect. The purpose has changed. In terms of religion, you expected to sleep with someone who you thought you were similar to, someone who you could hold the same objectives with. But now, you slept with someone who goes against your valued morals, those things that you have the right under Article 18 to hold and believe and live religiously to. You slept with someone who is not what you consented to sleep with. And, yes, as far as I'm concerned, deceit in general, like I said, is what would negate sexual consent. But in particular, significant deceit, such as gender deceit, disease and religion. Thank you very much. Um, the question, which factors should negate sexual consent, is a very broad topic. Uh, the whole idea that factors should negate sexual consent, there are a whole list of things that should but don't. For example, uh, marital status, it's an issue of morality. If you go to a nightclub and you meet someone who doesn't have a wedding ring on and you then sleep with that person, you find out that they are married, surely that's a deception. It should negate sexual consent, but it doesn't because you have been deceived by that person. Another thing is the age of consent, uh, 16. It can be said that the mental capacity of a person under 16 is not the same as somebody that is over 16 and the age of consent, and therefore that should negate it as they are not of the full, as I said, capacity to agree to decisions that someone over the age might be. Uh, STDs, as in the case of DICA, uh, which was a GBH case, it stated that giving some, intentionally giving someone a, grievous, uh, a sexually transmitted disease such as HIV is amountable to grievous bodily harm as you're infecting that person with the knowledge that it will impact their life for the future. Intoxication and drugs are another factor which should negate sexual consent. Uh, if you see somebody that you want to take home, as I said before, in a nightclub, and they are clearly intoxicated and obviously not able to make the right decisions, it should automatically get rid of their sexual consent. They are clearly not in a position to agree to what is happening. But yeah, however, sometimes people do decide to take that risk and then decide to go further with it, and it clearly does not get... It, it's a moral thing, it, basically. It's, morality comes into it a lot from things that should negate it. Uh, deception as to intention is another thing. In our FVDPP, the, the man in the case used, didn't use a condom when his wife wanted him to use a condom, and as a result of that, she became pregnant. Now, deception as to intention should definitely negate sexual consent. The woman is not agreeing to what she thought she was agreeing to. However, in that case, it was agreed that she was deceived. Uh, that's the factors. Thanks. Right, well done to both teams. It's now down to the judges to decide who our fourth team will be that will go through to round two. So whilst they deliberate, uh, a short recess. <laughs>